Keeping America moving, keeping America strong. We're fighting the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. All across America, he's found his way to a place in our community. He's always smiling and singing his song about America and living free. Helping you travel through this changing world, helping you get on your way. He's driving the highways of history, believing in today, and he's keeping America moving. Keeping America strong, providing the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. Some folks think of him only in terms of new cars and weekend sales and next year's models, but there's really much more to his story. He's a real leader here in our community. He believes in the American way, and he's always one of the first to stand up and speak out about how it can be made even better. Yes, he's America's automobile man, and his business is just about as competitive as they come. I remember when he bought that old vacant lot down on the corner and moved his dealership into that new building he put up. I think you could say that he's made more than a sizable commitment and contribution to our city and the economy here. He has 70 people working for him now, and that's a lot of jobs. Some of his employees have been in the automobile business for over 25 years and probably know more about transportation and its future than a government investigating committee. He's proud of those people too. Yes, he talks about them every day, just as if they were part of his own family. He's concerned about the role of transportation in America's future. Yes, he's come a long way since Henry Ford started it all, and I think that he can be trusted to keep America moving. And he's keeping America moving, keeping America strong, providing the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. He's America's automobile man. He's a neighbor. He's a friend. Americans know about the four freedoms: freedom of speech, freedom to worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. But have you ever thought about what our life would be like without a fifth freedom, our freedom of mobility? As Americans, we have the freedom to go where we want, when we want, and how we want. That's pretty important, isn't it? We don't usually make a big deal out of it, though. Probably because we don't have all the economic and political restrictions on travel that people face in other countries. I mean, here we just hop in our car or buy a ticket on a train or plane, and we're on our way. On our way to the store, to work, on our way to the beach or mountains, to grandma's, to church, and to go hunting or fishing or skiing or bowling, to see a drive-in movie, or maybe just for an afternoon drive in the country. What would happen if something, if anyone, put a roadblock in our way? What would happen if we lost our freedom of mobility? Well, for one thing, a lot of people you know would be out of work. One out of every six Americans who make their living from the automotive industry. Another thing would happen too if we lost our automotive mobility. The quality of our society would deteriorate. Church attendance would fall off. The Rotary Club, the Kiwanis, the Elks, and all the other civic groups and organizations would cancel their meetings. Sports events would have empty seats. Theaters and concert halls would be empty. Unbelievable, you say? How can this happen? It can happen. For example, if our energy supply runs dry, if our highways and our means of transportation aren't kept up to date, 
It can happen if our government policies don't continue to place high priority on automotive transportation. And it can happen if our policymakers forget the vital importance of our precious freedom, the American people, to protect and preserve our freedoms. We have to remind our leaders over and over again what freedom of mobility means to us and to our country. There is no one else to do it except us. He's keeping America moving, keeping America strong, providing the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. Helping you travel through this changing world and helping you get on your way. He's driving the highways of history, believing in today. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. Back in 1910, there were 202 people for every one automobile in the U.S. Today, there's about two people per car. That's a lot of cars, but more important, that's a lot of people. People with the freedom of mobility, the freedom to go where they want, when they want. NADA, the National Automobile Dealers Association, is proud of our contribution to this freedom because we're Americans, too. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. He's keeping America moving, keeping America strong, providing the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. Cars, trucks, campers, vans, we're a nation on wheels, and petroleum-based fuels keep these wheels turning, but we won't have these fuels forever. The National Automobile Dealers Association would like to remind car owners that we can make our fuel last longer by keeping engines properly tuned, checking tires often to maintain recommended pressure, keeping wheels properly aligned and balanced, and planning ahead to eliminate any unnecessary trips. NADA wants you to know that fuel conservation not only saves America's energy, it saves your money. He's America's auto. Automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. We've probably all been in this situation. After rushing around for hours, we've forgotten to pick up one very necessary item at the market. And the only thing to do now is hop back into the car for a last-minute dash to the store, right? But when you get in the car, do you buckle your seatbelt? Sure, it's just a short trip, but most accidents occur close to home. And seat belts are part of good defensive driving techniques because if everyone wore them, we'd save about 12,000 lives a year. The National Automobile Dealers Association wants you to protect you and your family by wearing your seat belts. Being prepared for the unexpected is what safety's all about. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing all that he can. He's keeping America moving, keeping America strong, providing the wheels to the future, helping our world move along. In ancient Greece, Epictetus once said that freedom is the right to live as we wish. In today's America, the right to live as we wish is based on many individual freedoms. Our freedom of speech, our freedom of worship, and our freedom of mobility, which is the freedom to go where we want, when we want. NADA, the National Automobile Dealers Association, is privileged to have contributed to America's freedom of mobility and essential to maintaining our right to live as we wish. He's America's automobile man, marching at the head of the band. He's leading the way to a brighter today, and he's doing 